All right, are we live? I think we're live. Are we live? Yes, yes, we're live. Okay. So guys, um, I wanted to do something real quick. I'm here in my office and I wanted to put together a quick free training. I've been messaging with a lot of guys. A lot of you guys have been messaging me. I've had some uh, private phone calls and some one-on-ones with some guys. So whether you're a customer of mine or not, I want to help you out. It's one of my passions. I hate seeing shop owners that are struggling and they're busting their butt working 60, uh, 70 hours a week, six days a week, and only making 50, 60 grand a year. So what I want to do is give you something that's going to impact you and hopefully put some money in your back pocket and bring you some peace and bring you some rest. So uh, first off, before I go any further, Thomas, you good? TJ, you good? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so I've got my guys in here with me. So if you've got any questions, throw them in the comment section. Thomas will then flag me and I'll answer them. Uh, uh, we'll go from there. Also, if you stay to the end, I got an amazing offer I'm going to offer you today. It's only good for today. In fact, it's only good probably at the end of this broadcast. When we end it, it'll go away. So we'll have a great, awesome offer there. And as well, um, if you've got any questions on how to work with this, you want to do more, you can respond whenever we do our offer at the end. Because I know a lot of you have asked me about my program and I haven't been able to respond to everybody. We'll put this in a replay, so if you see this tomorrow on Saturday, because today's Friday, then the offer won't be there, but at least you can then reach out. You can find out how you can work with this. We'll do whatever we can to help you, help you get to that next level. So for a lot of shop owners out there, I think we struggle sometimes with not having the energy to get to the next level, and for a lot of us, not having that plan, that step by step by step by step. And so what I want to talk to you about is compartmentalization. I want to talk to you about all the different systems that you operate inside of. So for a lot of us, we have boxes, and I taught on this at our last mastermind training. And whenever you're in these boxes, it's very, very unique on how they work. But yet we try to use the same brain to operate all of them. So I'm an ex-technician, right? So I say X because I am absolutely trying to give up as much as I know about cars. I know a lot. So I can put everything I've got in the business. And I'm going to encourage you to do the exact same thing. So, and I need to connect my guy's legs to his body. All right, there we go. So, if you think about it, you've got your front of house, you've got your back of house, um, you've got your marketing, bringing your cars in, and you've got your system to get your cars out of your shop. So, basically your front of house handles everybody that's being marketed to, that's showing up. Your back of house actually produces the work, lets the work leave, right? Your system is what gets it through. It's very, very simple. It's not rocket science. But these four car, uh, categories are really what makes every business work, specifically for us. Now, I believe in telling you guys that we have separate systems. So our systems here and here are totally different. These departments are something that aren't ever connected. So if you think about the front of the house, if you've got your salesman here, and you've got your techs here, you've got to figure out how you're going to focus on your salesman, how you're going to focus on your techs, and be able to keep these two separate in your mind and fix them. So everybody here may have a technician that is moving slow. He's not doing what he's supposed to do. You may have a writer that uh, demeans women or a writer that um, doesn't know anything, isn't selling things correctly, forgetting to do their paperwork, uh, not doing their system correctly. If you've got the magnet system I use, you're not moving the magnet. You know, whatever it is, they're not doing it. And they may be a good salesman, and they may be a good technician, but it's just not 100%. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to focus on each side one by one. You may go, well, Aaron, I'm just tired. I don't feel like screwing with it. I'm making 10%. That's enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. You're going to believe deep down inside that you're, you're, you're here for a reason. You're not here just to serve the public and fix brakes all day. That's not what you're here for. So if that's the deal, we're going to focus on our salesman for a second. So if I have a girl that shows up and she can sell well and she's just not good at her paperwork, I'm going to focus down on that and I'm going to figure out how can I get her to do what she's best at all day, every day. Well, she's really good at talking, right? So if she's really good at talking to people, then I'm going to focus on with just her, just dealing with the text and just dealing with, think about this for a second, your customers. How do you spell that? I don't want her getting into anything else. She'll write her stories. She'll bail out her customer. That's it. Then I'm going to teach. Y'all heard me teach this if you've followed my stuff. I believe in having parts managers. And I don't believe in parts departments. Big difference. But I'm going to have my parts manager get in here on the technician side. I'm going to have them focus 
on the tech side, and they're going to sit here and say, what does this tech need to do their job? So how do I make sure I get the right O-rings, everything else, and I confirm the parts? So they're going to confirm and they're going to reconcile the parts as they come in and make sure I've got the O-ring, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, so that Porsche Cayenne or that Ford F-250 diesel doesn't get tore down and stuck on a rack and the cab off of it and you can't go any further forward. They're also going to negotiate the parts and they're also going, if I can put an E on the end here, they're also going to focus on making sure the shop is organized. So what kind of a person do I need that can, and I drew this off of the back person, I don't know, ignore that, sorry. So what am I going to need to get the right kind of person for that position? Think about it. If I have a parts manager and I have a service advisor, then this parts manager is going to replace a CSR or anything else you guys have been wasting your money on. And I'm sorry, I'm extremely passionate about this. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry can be trained to answer the phone correctly and get a customer over the curb. Anybody. So you're going to have your parts manager and your salesman. This is a store doing 100 k a month, and I'm always going to teach off of 100 k I got stores doing over 200. I've also got a store that's just under 100. I know the whole spectrum. I got everything in the middle. So just follow me. We're always going to work off of 100 for easy math. So two people working this. This writer manager is what I call them that sells all your work. They also go back here, they talk to your technicians. They have all the conversations because they're good at people. They're good at verbal contracts. That's their specialty. They'll write their own stories because they're remembering what they said to the customer. They're building value in the ticket when they write out the ticket. It's not going to be R&R &R serpentine belt. Technician found cracks in serpentine belt. Recommended replacement customer agreed. Serpentine replaced at this time. Next time this belt needs to be replaced is you know, 90,000 miles around. Whatever it may be, they're going to put their story in. The guarantee, the warranty, all that. Then right here, your parts manager, they're going to receive the parts, they're going to order the parts, they're going to negotiate the parts. We don't allow our parts managers to ever pick up the mouse and click and order a part. We have everything ordered on the phone. We negotiate all of our parts. Everything. You may go, how is that possible? My goal is this parts manager needs to pay for themselves every month. They track their savings. So if your salesman goes and they take a ticket, we use clipboards at our shop. I am not a paperless shop. I'll come out and tell you that. Don't get hung up on that lie and say, just because I can be paperless, I'm going to be paperless. You only do something if it makes you money. You don't do it for any other reason than that. So if they get a clipboard, and they're reviewing that clipboard, and they look on it, and they say, wow, I need to sell this job. They go and they sell that job. They hand it off at a 59% gross profit, and they give it down here to the parts manager. Parts manager then shops the parts, finds the part. Once they find the part, then they then get on the phone, they call up the vendor and they say, hey, I can do this, but I need to offer X. And you may say, well, Aaron, I can't do that. My vendor won't like me. Guys, I spend a ton of money. I got six stores, most of everybody that's watching this. I, there's guys that are bigger than me out there. But you know what I'm talking about. It's not hard to do this. I promise you. You're going to get on the phone and whoever you spend the most with will be the most willing to negotiate. So you negotiate. You get a deal going. Let's say on a hundred dollar part, she calls up and she says, I can give you 60 bucks. And they go, ha, ah, no way, no. Let them do that. Then you're going to respond back with, well, what is it going to take? And they'll come back with 75 or 80. Here's the deal. If you said, hey, what can you do? They're going to come at you with 90, but you left 10 to 20 dollars on the table. You need to come in right from the get-go, offering the number you want. As Mike Daniel puts it, you're looking for the hell no. You're not just looking for the no, but the hell no. That, that tells you where the line is of pain. There's so much markup in parts, guys. People don't understand. So they're going to order that, and they're going to do what we call the grocery list. They're going to make their list for the day, and they're going to get it all ordered. All that stuff's going to start heading that way. You need to do this several times a day. So once those parts show up, then that parts manager goes through that same clipboard and a bunch of other clipboards and are waiting for parts bin, and they just go, done, 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 done. And they check and make sure all those parts are there. They showed up where they were supposed to, and then they dispatched them to your technician. I use a stainless steel table taped off for each technician. It's very simple. You stack up all of Bob's parts. For the Smith job, and you just take a post note, put it on the top of the stack, and put Smith on it. People go, Aaron, why don't you put the RO number? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? We found a long time ago that technicians cannot remember RO numbers. But they can remember Smith. They can remember Wigglesworth, or whatever it may be. They can remember that. And I'm all about speed. So I think about who their last name is. That's who I stick on the ticket. Do we still use RO numbers? Yeah, but for internal communication, that's how we operate. Did that parts manager... Because they did this over and over and over, and they saved you $30, $50, $100, over and over and over, what ends up happening is it adds up. 
in a hundred thousand dollar month shop, you can take a twenty-five thousand dollar parts bill and squash it down to twenty. You may not always hit it, you may hit twenty-two, twenty-three, you may hit nineteen one month. Your goal is to get to twenty. So what I do in my and this is the way I run this, so obviously use a grain of salt. Don't just do it because I say to do it. Figure out what works for you and your shop. So the way I operate is I do 15% for my techs. I do 25% for my labor. I'm sorry. My parts, if I can think straight. Which gives me a 40%. 15 plus 25 is 40%. Cost of goods, right? So I got 40%. That's my cogs. Then from there, I've got my 60% gross profit, so I'm going to have 40% for overhead, and then I'm going to have my 20% net. You may go, well, Aaron, it's impossible to hit 20% net. I'll go, why? Well, I can't hit 60%. My market's too tough. Well, then I'm going to tell you, you've got to focus in on your marketing and focus in on the front of the house. We're going to come back to the back in a second. I just blew up for you the front. On the back of the house, though... It has to do with the marketing is how many techs do you have in your building to get this work in? Well, we believe in 30 grand a month per technician. Now, you may have an A tech that can do 40. You may have a B tech that can do 30, 32. You may have a C tech that can only do 25. But on average, when you group an A, B, and C together in the same building, you're going to get 30 grand a man. So 30 grand a man is parts and labor sales total. So if you are doing 60K and you go, I can't grow, Aaron. It's impossible. I can't do anymore. Hire a third tech. It's not rocket science. Especially if you've been two techs for a long time. That tells me you've got a bottleneck of cast, uh, customers stacked up trying to get in your shop. And if you think about this, customers try to come in in waves. They don't come in individually. So remind me, go back to, guys, remind me, go back to waves. So whenever it comes down to marketing, though, and you're trying to understand how you can get this number, and you say, Aaron, I can't beat that. How many pieces of paper do I have here? I got enough. If you, if you think you can't beat that, let me show you where you're wrong. Some of you here, you've been quoting jobs, and you've been quoting jobs at 60%. Customers sometimes say yes, sometimes they say no. Your average, though, goal is 60, so that means you've got jobs that you're quoting at 40, and jobs that you're quoting all the way up to maybe even 80, which might be a real simple, quick part job that you can knock out. Here's the problem with this. If you're just shooting always for a 60, and you can't get there, there's a quick, quick way to figure this out. Take a spreadsheet, and we provide this for all of our members. We do something a little more advanced, but take a spreadsheet, enter in your total sales. And I know I'm going fast, but I'd rather go fast and you go back and watch the replay and give you more value than something you paid thousands of dollars for with someone else than have you sit here and go, how long will I do this? This is a shop owner that's got shops that's doing it every day. So total sales, you're going to enter them on the spreadsheet. So a $1,000 job, a $500 job, um, let's do another thousand dollar job, another five hundred dollar job, and a twenty five hundred dollar job. I don't even know what that comes to. So it's three grand, four grand, forty five hundred, fifty five hundred dollars. So let's just pretend for easy math, because I can't go all the way up to a hundred grand, that you did fifty five hundred in a shop. Out of that fifty five hundred that you got in sales, if you were to go back and write down what did your technicians actually quote. So if your technicians on this, you know, five or a thousand dollar job. Let's say that that job they quoted uh, fourteen hundred. On the five hundred dollar job, let's say they quoted seven hundred. On the thousand dollar job, let's say they quoted two thousand. Let's say on the five hundred dollar job, they quoted uh, let's say it was forty five hundred something big. They declined it. Then we'll say on the twenty five hundred dollar job, they quoted three thousand. So you'll add that up. So let's see if I can do this live. 5,000, 9,500, 95, 10, 5, uh, 10, 9, plus 7 would be uh, 10, 9, 11, 9, 11, minus 300, 11, 6, right? Yeah. So 11,600. So if you take the 5,500 and divide it into 11,600, which my guys are all busy, so they can't do. If you guys right now take 5,500 divided by 11,000. 600, you're going to see somewhere around probably, I don't know, uh, 47 to 48% close ratio. So if we end up with a 48% close ratio, here's where this kicks in. This is where it gets good. At a 48% close, you now know that your writers, if you have a really good service advisor, they are pricing in the market just enough to not quite get in half. 
The goal is not 48. The goal is 50. You want your advisors at a 50% or better close ratio. You may go, Aaron, my advisor's closing with 75%. Bullcrap. Go back, quote everything, including the zero tickets. And what you're going to find is this, that you're going to have customers on top of this list that you also quoted, I don't know, you started to bring it up and they just said, no, I don't even want to hear about it. You know, hell no. And then you don't include that in your average ticket. You don't include that in the quote. And over here, maybe you brought something up like another $1,000 and you, you didn't sell anything. It was a big goose egg. What ends up happening though here is they don't put this in the system. A lot of shop owners that are prideful ignore this. And so then they say, well, all, all these jobs here we did 70%. Well, that's great. But you need to know if you have an advisor that can't handle a rough and gruff customer and get them over the curb or get them to buy when they're there as a waiter. So what I want you to do is I want you to focus on understanding all of it and get to that 50%. So back to what we were saying. If you're at a 60%, hold on. If you're at a 60% and you're trying to close this and you're trying to hit this 48% number, I want you to see something. This right here has nothing to do with how much money you make. I know all the coaching companies push that. Everybody says this is what you got to have. The only thing this has to do with is how quickly you can outrun overhead. So you need to write this down. Outrun overhead. That's your goal. You've got to outrun, I'm going to underline this, we've got to put some emphasis on it. We've got to outrun our overhead. If you can't outrun your overhead, you cannot make money. So if I want to get past this, how do I get there? You might honestly have to drop this to 55%, maybe 60%, I'm sorry, 50%. Who knows? The point is, you're going to drop this so you can get this to go higher. So if your target is a $700 average ticket in a European shop, or if you have an American Asian shop and your, your goal is to get a $400 average ticket, what's going to happen is that average ticket is going to depend on how much these guys close. So if I can consistently with a very good service rider or very good several service riders not get above 48%, I need to slow down and focus on getting a 50% or better. So what does that mean? Somebody comes into my shop, I'm going to keep quoting my normal parts matrix that I've been shooting for for years, right? The one that you've been trying to hit 60% with, but you haven't been able to. What you care about is getting to where you can outrun your overhead. And remember, right here, I'll get back here, we were trying to get past this 40% and get this 20% net. So the faster we get this 40% paid, the quicker we start piling up cash for ourselves. And for those out there that are like, well, Aaron, you know, this is tiring. This doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't want to get into all these numbers. I'm telling you the math is in the number, or the, the, all the cash is in the numbers and in the math. Focus here. Everything's going to come together for you. If you can outline your overhead and you can understand how to get here, everything's going to change. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to then have a customer show up and they're going to say, Aaron, I want to buy, um, I need to get my trains fixed and I need to get uh, brakes. And we did this the other day with our uh, company. And tires. And I posted this the other day for you guys. Yeah, I think it's on our shop fix page maybe a week ago. So if they come in and you quote them 4500 total, and you know the tires were 500, uh, the brakes were a thousand, and you had trans that was getting rebuilt for three grand. So forty five hundred dollars was the quote, and they say I can't afford that. They're trying to figure out how to get there. If you can go in here and maybe promote a used transmission instead. And get a used, let's say this one right here, you're buying the transmission, remanufactured from somebody else for $1,500. Um, or maybe, but, but, yeah, let's say $1,500 is a real low GP. You're selling it for $21. You're only marking up $700. Bucks. You turn around, you're putting it in for $900. But what if you could buy a used one for $500? And now you can do the whole job and make a higher GP and get out of the door for $1,500. You may say, well, Aaron, I don't want to do that because now I'm not servicing my customer. Well, they're not going to fix it anyway. Instead, they're going to go into debt and go buy a new car. So why not? Find a way to get them back on the road. Just get the best stinking used transmission you can find. On the brakes, same thing. Maybe you can offer them a cheaper brand of brake pad, a brake pad you can't put a warranty with. It'll last a long time, but it might squeal or create a lot of brake dust. Whatever. Maybe you get that down to 800 Maybe when you're on the tires, you can't do much when you leave that at 500 but you still land the ticket, it's $2,900, you get down here, you land the sale. And maybe the GP's not as good, maybe you just come in here and you cut everything. This is the piece I want you to see. 
in your current position right now in your company, if you have a technician inspect a car, and then you have a service advisor try to sell it, build the quote, and you have a parts manager look all the parts up, and then the customer declines it, and you get a big goose egg, and then that customer says, I'm going to come get my car, and you say, okay, fine, screw it, come get your car. What's going to end up happening is that customer is going to show up, and they're going to rob you. They're going to take their car, you're going to put your ego out there and be like, well, if I can't do it for 4500 I don't want anything to do with it. They're going to go to some other shop and get it done for twenty nine. They're going to go down the street to a dealer. They're going to spend more on sales tax than what they would have on this repair and go into debt and buy a new car. How smart is that? And if you really slow down and think about this, guys, this is the part that, to me, just blows everything out of the water. That customer, they used up your technician's time. They used up your service advisor's time. They used up rent. They used up electricity, insurance, everything else that had to happen in your business is still adding up that are costs you can't track. There's no way for you to track them. They're gone. They're sunk costs. So let's go back to our P&L. Are you sure you want to let this job roll out just because it's not giving you this right here? You may go, well, what do you mean? At 4500 let's pretend for fun that this job, this $4,500 job, is going to give you a 20% net, which would be $900. And if we're running a 100K shop, $900, you know, that's 20 grand, that's one of those $1,000 on us, right? One of those 20s. I would be willing to give up that 20%. I would be willing to do that job for $900 less, which would put it down, what, in the $3,600 range, even if I left all the great stuff in there. I'd be willing to go back here, talk to my tech, see if I can lower labor. I'd be willing to do anything, but I'd be willing to give that 20% up. You may say, well, why? Because I'm paying my tech, isn't I? I'm paying my parts bill, and I'm paying my overhead. In fact, I could just do a 40% gross profit, pay my tech bill, pay my parts bill, and pay my overhead. Excuse me. And I just wouldn't get a 20% net. And what would happen? Well, my sales would increase by, let's see, um, if I gave up that, $3,600, or if I did it down here low, I'd still have my GP. This is just being resourceful, and this is by having somebody who is a parts manager who's focused on finding cheaper parts. You're not going to get this unless you have somebody focused on this stuff, trying to save a ticket. But this job here, if I left it, the expensive version, and did $3,600, even if I only got my text paid, my parts bill paid, and my overhead, think about it. Well, I've got happier text. I've got my parts bill paid. And now I get better discounts because I'm a higher volume shop. Is guys, if you're doing 60 grand and you think you don't, you get the same discounts like I do doing 100, you're crazy. And if you're doing 100, you think you get the same discounts like I do doing 200, you're also doubly crazy. I get every time I compare mine to somebody else, my prices are crazy different. 40% on the overhead. If you just get that covered, isn't it not worth it? I'd love to have some rent paid. Don't get so stuck on the 60%. You may go, well, Aaron, you still don't get it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not getting anything to the net. I'm just doing more work for nothing. Hell, no, you're not doing it for nothing. Think about this. If I get this paid, what about that last job at the end of the month that's going to be the last job that finally gets my nut covered and gets my overhead covered where I start making profit? If I do this job right now, that job all the way at the end of the month on the 29th and the 30th ends up being a job that contributes all of its money down here to net because it's covered. Because you guys know, once you outrun overhead, all you've got to pay is 15% for text, $25 for parts. So if we did a $100 job, $15 would go to our technician, $25 would go to our parts. And guess what? Because rent's paid, electric paid, everything else is paid, all this is gone, 60 cents falls straight to the bottom line. So the sooner I can knock out overhead, the better. I grow my shop, it gets busier, thing gets easier. It's just stressing out, going, oh crap, I didn't have a 60% GP, I only had 55 and here's how this works. You only do this when they threaten to tow the car out. I don't know, the only five to ten times a month it happens. You do it, but in that five to ten times you land a two, three, th a two or three thousand dollar ticket, your sales jump by 30 grand. Oh, and then guess what? Now you can finally hire that third tech. Then when you hire that third tech, you can start outrunning overhead. And if you think about this, this only happens every so often. You're not going to do this every time. You're going to keep presenting what you always do at 60%. You're not changing your parts matrix, you're not doing anything. Some of you, if your owner's on site and you have single stores, you can say, I'll do red line pricing, I'll keep a red pin on me, you come to me, I'll prove it, and I'll do it in a red pin on the clipboard, you move on, get the job sold, because we're going to land a customer. Something everyone needs to write down. Stop trying 
to get a sale, I'm sorry, stop trying to get a customer to land a sale, okay? Stop trying to get a customer to land a sale. That's not what it's about. You land a sale to get a customer. If you can get this customer to spend money the first time at a discount, and that customer agrees and signs up for this, then guess what? They're, they're going to say, wow, you know, so-and-so's my shop, so-and-so's my shop. I love these guys. And now that they're that shop and they're sold on it, they're going to go, holy crap, I want to keep going back to these guys. They're great. And in the beginning, we all know at the very beginning when a customer comes in, you always have to be more price sensitive. You have to be more aggressive. As the relationship gets better and better and better, then you can move the needle up and you can actually get a higher GP. But don't get hung up on getting 60% average for the entire month. When a store has been built for years and it has a long-standing reputation, lots of existing customers, it's much easier to get 60% than a brand new store. You're still winning people over with oil changes. See, if I do this every so often, just when a customer's about to pull their car, three, four, five times a week tops, if you're doing 40, 50 cars a week, then what's going to happen is at the end of the month, it's only going to drop me maybe to a 55, but I'd rather have 55% on 100K than 60% on 60K all freaking day long. Think about it. It's all about outrunning your overhead. Now here's the kicker. For a lot of you out there, you gonna drink and get you excited. For a lot of you out there, you gotta see the way your parts come into your shop and the way customers come into your shop. If you have an oil change, that might be your highest converting offer out of everything you do. It's your highest converting. You need to take that, and let's say you have a lot of offers. Let's say you have a free battery check. And let's say you have, if I can put my C on there, let's say you have a free check engine light inspection. And let's say you have a, a winter, winterization special, I don't know, winter special. And some of these are free, some of these cost money, it doesn't matter. They're, they're your discounts that you offer. You may go, Aaron, I'm not a discount shop, then you're missing out. Because I used to say that. And then when I started discounting just the commoditized items that are out there, holy crap, my company blew up. Everybody wants a deal. You don't believe it, go to the grocery store. What about uh, the BMWs that you work on or the Mercedes you work on? Even BMW and Mercedes have into the sale, uh, into year events. Uh, Ford does it every year and they sell more than everybody. I mean, guys, come on. They work. Stop getting your ego in the way of your wallet. Get your wallet in line. So look at this oil change, free battery check, check engine light, winter special. Then over here, you might have brake job. And you might have a flush. You might have a repair. You might have an electrical repair, and then you might have, uh, what would be another one, what would be fun here, uh, oh, oh, oh uh, uh, emissions repair, catalytic converter, vacuum pump, stuff like that. Those are always very profitable. So what ends up happening, you need to figure out what's your highest converting right now, and you've got to match them. So you might say, Aaron, I make more money on brake jobs. Then every customer that comes in, make sure you're not selling stuff that doesn't need it. I don't believe in dishonesty. Believe me. I'm the most honest person that uh, everybody tells me they talk to. So I'm all about telling the truth. So if you get a brake job, though, and you have an oil change, and you know that's your highest one, and this over here is your best GP job, if you connect those two together, you're going to get a sale. You may say, well, Aaron, on that same customer, they need a flush, and they also need an electrical repair. Well, this is a safety item, and it just so happens to be your highest GP item. So focus on trying to match your highest GP item with your highest converting offer, no matter what this GP is, and it brings your average up. Emissions repair. You might do a catalytic converter. You heard me say that's really profitable. Cats are horrible gross profit. But if you think about it, if he rolls a cat in, and he does it, and it's an hour job, he does it in 30 minutes, and you bought the cat for $1,100, you sold it for $1,600, you had $500 of gross profit dollars in parts, and he knocked it out in an hour, then he made... Five plus, let's say, uh, on the late rate, you're $100 an hour, and you're paying him 25 flat rate, he made 75 bucks. Take the 75 and the 500, it's $575 of gross profit dollars in one hour. So five, 75 in an hour. Here's the crazy part about this. This 575 on that hour, that's awesome, that's super exciting, that's great, that's wonderful, but people get hung up because they only made a 40% GP. Who cares? You made $575 an hour, and our break job, if you made $75 on the part, on the labor, then on top of that, uh, let's say uh, you made $150 of gross profit dollars on pads and rotors. It's $225, or $250, that's nothing compared to this. 
Nothing. So give me these all day long. I don't care. You're going to get hung up on dollars, not hung up on percentages. So if you can get an oil change, you know, and you know people in your area are always burning up cats and burning up air pumps and everything else because of bad gas or the part of the country you're in, whatever it may be. Um, free battery checks, if you know you're going to find electrical stuff, you need to start thinking in your mind about how you can offer specials. A lot of times a customer just wants a special. They just want to feel like they got a deal. That's it. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. You just got to partner it with the right one. You might find that your check engine light, you do a free check engine light special, and it's very easy to convert, get people to show up for that. If you market that out on the internet, Facebook, or anything else, direct mail, and you might find that it gets you lots of heavy repair work. Awesome. Let's do it. Whatever it may be, you're going to match that offer with this offer that grosses your sales and gets it higher. As you can see, I've got a theme here. It's all about getting more money and stop worrying about your 60% and start worrying about something that matters a lot more than 60%. And that's real freaking money. And real freaking money can pay real freaking bills. And that allows you, guess what, to see your wife, to see your kids, to go to a little league game, to hire another employee, whatever it may be. Go do that. Stop freaking out about having your ego in the way and stuck on 60%. That's not what it's about. It's about the 20%. It's about whatever you got to do to get there. So if you remember, come back right here. If you were looking at your company right now and you go, where and how do I figure out where I'm at? Take your 48% that you're getting on your guys. So right now, get a spreadsheet. Go ahead and go back in November to the 1st. It's only three days, right? Enter in everything you quoted. Enter in everything they closed. Let it go to the end of the month, and you can track this weekly. If you find your advisors who can't hit 50% or better, you're probably priced a little high for your market. You're going to lower your price until you hit 50%. When you hit 50% close on your service advisors, that's when you floor it. And the way you get there is you don't lower your overall price. Don't go changing your parts, matrix, and your labor rate. Just on an as-needed basis, adjust and land the customer. Adjust the sale price to get the customer. Now, I told you how to affect your cost. I told you all that. But all that aside, adjust your price to land the customer. What will happen is it will lower your gross profit at the end of the month, but you'll get more sales, you'll outrun your overhead quicker, you'll make more profit. And you'll start noticing them getting up to a 50%. And when you're there, now you can scale. You floor it on the marketing, and you have a system that you know will give you a predictable result. If a car rolls in, you're going to get, if you have a 700 average ticket, you know, if I spend 2000 bucks, I'm going to get this many customers, all those customers are going to show up, those customers are going to spend money, and it's going to generate for me a net profit on the backside. It's just that simple. So focus in on this, guys. Understand how you're going to get there. Now, that's on the front. That's in your marketing. On the system, I kind of dove into that a little bit. On your back of house, don't get hung up on getting your technicians efficient. I preach this all the time. I had a group call with all my staff. Not all my staff. Uh, a lot of my clients today. I think we had 25 or 30. How many was it, Thomas? 33. 33. So we had 33 on a group call today. And in that group call, we went over a bunch of different things, and uh, one of the things we covered was tech efficiency. So, guys, tech efficiency in a lot of ways is crap. Don't get hung up on this lie. I can build a company all day long on a guy that can turn 30, 35 hours a week, is consistent, isn't too expensive, has no drama, and gives me excellent results, can die in any car, and doesn't break it, doesn't have comebacks. I can build my company on that. I cannot build my company on a prima donna that turns tons of hours that's going to cause issues. Now, do I have guys that turn a lot of hours? Absolutely. But because I don't want prima donnas, because we know the auto industry, we're a bunch of hurt individuals, and a lot of us, we found our way into this industry because we were raised in such poor environments, I focus on this. So I go after these technicians and I say, listen, if you're going to behave, if you're going to have a great attitude, be a team player, you're in. But what that means is I end up having to cut a lot of guys that return a lot of hours that maybe some of you would keep up with or put up with. I won't. Because I want to sleep at night. If I can make money on a guy doing 30 hours a week, great. Now, do I have systems to make him faster? Absolutely. freaking lutely But it's all about what you focus on. I had this call today with my team when we were talking about this. So you need to think about what you're focusing on right now. What is it you're focusing on? And think about what you're not focusing on. I want you, I, I, right now, I want you to think about where one of your friends are that are more successful than you and where you are. Start choosing to fix and, and adjust your life so that you focus on the things that matter and not on the things that don't. 
Now, do I ignore a guy who's turning 20 hours? No. Understand this is a rule of thumb that I'm saying. But I don't sit here and focus on tech efficiency. I focus on teamwork. I focus on great attitudes. Happy employees. A team that gets into a jive, into a groove together. That's what I focus on. Because I can build my company on that. I can focus, I can move on, and I can say, you know what? The back of the house, it's taken care of. The front of the house, it's taken care of. Now I've got marketing, I can scale because I have a system to adjust my price and track my profit correctly. And so now my marketing's not a waste. So many shop owners tell me, Aaron, I did a marketing plan, it didn't work. Well, if you don't have a shop set up to take more work, it's not going to work. You've got to have another technician. You've got to have the systems in place to understand how you're actually paying your bills. You've got to understand the complicated math problem that auto uh, repair presents to you every day. If you don't understand these P&Ls and understand how you get there, guys, you've, you've got to learn it. It's so stinking important. You've got to know it. It's huge. So, I don't want to go too far. I don't want to confuse anybody. I don't want to fast. And a lot of you are going to see this in the replay. When you watch the replay, you may not understand how we got to all this. But um, I'm going to ask you to message us, reach out. I told you you could reach out to us and you could talk to us about some stuff. I've got systems for all of these. I focus a lot more on the heart of every employee, the heart of the owners that own their shops that I coach and I help. If I fix the owner, the shop makes money. Because what happened is necessity is the mother of all invention. If I can help you figure something out and you have a click and you have a moment and all of a sudden your, whole, your mind is opened up, you go, holy crap, this has been holding me back. You make one little change, your sales jump. Today alone, we had 33 people on the call. I had six people talking about record months. $30,000 higher this month, $150,000 higher this month, another one $22,000 this month, over and over and over after jumping in. The, the biggest thing we do is we have all the programs is we focus on the owner. The owner. You're the problem. It's not your lazy ass technician. It's not that service advisor you keep complaining about. It's you. It's this Jacko standing right here. So, whether you're a female or male owner, and whether you're a strong leader or a weak leader, you got to step up. you got to run the company that you've been given, the company that you believed when you were passionate about your business, excited about your future. That's the freaking company that you want, and that's what you built, and you said, that's what I'm going to be someday. I'm going to go be successful. I'm going to make all this money. And then when it didn't happen, it didn't work out like you thought, you started giving up your dreams, one dream at a time. You didn't give up on them all at once. But one day you said, you know what? Maybe I don't need to make... 300 grand a year. Maybe I can do 250. A few months went by and you said, maybe I don't need to do 250. A couple months went by and you said, maybe I don't need to own my own building. And then a couple months went by and you said, maybe I don't need to make 150. Then you said, maybe I don't need to have that gorgeous dream shop I've always wanted to have. Maybe I don't need to have two locations. Maybe I don't need to have three locations. Maybe I don't even need to make 100. Maybe I'll just be comfortable. And you start telling yourself lies like, well, money isn't everything. You're absolutely right. It's not. But you can't help the world. You can't do what you're called to do unless you got some freaking money in your wallet, on your butt cheek. You've got to be able to pull that out and you've got to pay for stuff. So think about who you are right now in all of this mess. Now you're running around and you're doing dad or mom syndrome, putting out fires, answering questions. There's a system to it, guys. Focus on the right things. Stop focusing on the wrong things. It's not that hard. I know it gets drummed up. People want to overcomplicate it. It's not. Simplify it. Segment it down. Fix the front of your shop. Fix the back of your shop. Get some systems in place and kick up your marketing. Do not do all this at once. But guess what? You can do all these in one day, one day, one day, one day. You go, there's no way. Yes, there is. We do it all the time, every day. We do it in our own shops. We drive out, we fire somebody, we put the new person in. It's just that simple. But a lot of people want to think about it, they want to talk about it, they want to go for it. That's bull. Make the decision. Step up. So, Hope this helps. Um, crap, I think that's it. Thomas, you good? <laughs> All right. TJ goes, hey, what are you going to talk about? I said, I have no idea, didn't I? <laughs> he was like, oh, crap. So um, we got a special offer. It's available only today. And we're going to make the offer available until 6 p.m. Central. So you got to message our Facebook uh, page. Or do you have a link? Mm -hmm. You do have links. Okay, so Thomas is going to post some links. If uh, you're interested in our coaching program and you've talked to us, I've told a lot of you guys, it's $1,000 a month, and it comes with all of our courses, it comes with our group calls, it comes with our four meetings in Nashville every year, and it comes with me and Thomas and TJ, all of us getting around you and helping you grow your shop. 
the best friends you're probably ever going to make in your life and a bunch of other crazy, awesome stuff. That's $1,000 a month. It's real simple. Um, if that's something you're not prepared to do, we've got some amazing courses out there. Um, our courses, uh, uh, like right now, if you're, if you're like, ah, I don't want to dive in that deep, then I'd start with the marketing course. Our marketing course is $3.99. That marketing course is amazing. You can dive into that thing. It's going to be something that's going to take you to the next level. It's going to show you how to put some stuff together. It's really that box there and help you get to the, to the place where you need to go. You don't have us there to help coach you and answer questions, but it's going to at least give you that framework. And uh, everybody who signed up for it has said it's been huge. There's a lot of guys that are probably on this call or call on this feed or have watched it a lot of my stuff in the past that have already bought from us and have been messaging us. And they can tell you and they can test to it. It's some great stuff, awesome stuff. So today, today only until 6, what we're going to do is you can hit those links that Thomas has got posted. One of them is going to say coaching or mastermind, something like that. And the other one's going to say marketing. The one for marketing we're going to do today only for $1.99. That's today only. And the one for coaching, we're going to give you your first month free. And by the way, the first month is free. And then the way we normally do it is if you sign up for coaching, the first month we give you all your money back if something goes wrong. And we don't do contracts. You can quit at any point. So normally, it's $1,000 a month, you'd sign up, if you signed up today, and you went into December, you said, hey Aaron, this thing's crap, I don't want to do it, I'll give you all your money back. But because we're giving you the first month free, we'll extend that all the way into the month of December. So you'll have that money back guarantee for basically 60 days, and you only have to pay for one month. So you would be paid nothing today, you put in your credit card info, you sign up, you to try everything, you could quit before your credit card is ever charged. You have nothing to lose. And it's our job to pour into you, pour the gas in the fire, get you ramped up, get you going, and get you doing what you're supposed to be doing, and not sitting here and sitting back and suffering and not getting to push through. Now, on top of that, this is what we're going to give you. So it's not just a great deal. I'm going to also give you, if you do the $199 package, I'm also going to throw in there our Basics Boot Camp course. The Basics Boot Camp course is going to teach you how to do shop flow, increase your flow, get to the, the, the highest level you can. On top of that, it's going to basically break down how you interact with all these people and these employees and get them all on the same page. It's a very powerful course. I had a message the other day from a guy and he said, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And he said, this alone, I know is going to make a huge difference in my company. I'm so excited. I can't wait to join your mastermind. So that was pretty awesome when I got that. That little course right there, thrown in for free on top of the marketing course. As well, on top of that, I'm going to throw in all the infographics as well. Those infographics, they're going to come in, they're going to uh, they're, they're awesome. They really are an addition to, it's something you can print, you can laminate, put on the wall, it explains to your technicians what's going on, it breaks it all down, it uses my stick figures a lot, it's pretty sweet, and it's going to really help your guys understand and follow you and understand what you need to do next. Now, I specialize in getting your team motivated, I specialize in getting them going. So on top of that, if you decide to do the mastermind level, we're also going to include an employee access only for your staff, where you can put them in front of videos, I train your staff for you service advisors, new GSs, you, whatever it is, it helps you out. Now let's be real, let's think about this. You may go, Aaron, I, I can't, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna spend that money, it's fine. Cool, no big deal. I'm gonna keep posting free training because I make way more money on my six repair shops. The reason we started this company is we wanna help other shops that are struggling. Truly help. Your $1,000 a month doesn't make a bit of difference to us. Here's what it does do though. It helps raise the bar for the entire industry and that is my goal. I'm going to right now, not single-handedly, but with all the shops that join, Everybody who helps and they join my program, they commit to my goal, my vision of raising the bar of the industry. And we are going to do that. So all the shops who are currently in my group right now, we are all in this together. We are trying to raise the industry. We are always sharing. We're always giving out information. We're trying to help. But this is what I believe in. I think that you get in something like this and you go, Aaron, crap, it's $1,000 a day. Well, if you're a 20-day month, what's that come out to you? 50 bucks a day. If you can't take this system and make $250 a week, $250 a week? One little sale? To pay for it? You're crazy. You make a wire. I don't have the time to deal with it. What do you mean the time? We give you back your time. I mean, what are you going to do? Keep putting in 80-hour weeks for the next eight weeks until the end of the year then go, well, oh, New Year's resolution, better change. We don't do that. So our whole thing is about getting you motivated, getting you pumped, getting you excited to make the decisions you haven't, had to, uh, haven't been able to make in the past and really get you to the next level and teach you the stuff you don't know they just pour gas in the fire, the fire that's already in your heart and you let it get squashed out. That's what we do. You can tell I'm high energy, all my staff's high energy, we always are going for it. And then if maybe you're the guy and you're looking at the course and you're just like, Aaron, I'm not ready for that, I'm only doing 20, 30K a month, then you get that little uh, 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 marketing course. And I have guys that have joined at 30 and immediately the first month they jumped to 45 the first month. I had a guy join, 
Gosh, he joined in June, and uh, he was doing 95, he had 173, and by August, had another guy who joined you in the 40s in December of last year, and by August, he did uh, 97,000. So our whole thing is about moving the needle. So you may not think you're ready, but you could be ready even if you're a small shot. But let's just say you decide to go the marketing course only route. That's fine. It's cool. Go the marketing course only. Do that. Let's be real, guys. That's uh, uh, forty bucks or four hundred dollars uh, that we've dropped down to two hundred now. I mean, two hundred bucks on twenty billable days, ten dollars a day. I mean, guys, come on. You, you can't make ten dollars off of it, and that's not two hundred dollars a month going on. That's two hundred dollars once. It's one time. So I encourage you, understand that this is all the next level. Uh, understand that there's so much more. Understand that there's another level beyond this, another level beyond this, and another level beyond that. And I teach these in levels. And I teach this from a shop owner's perspective who grew very quickly and got to the amount that I have now. So I want you to understand it and see how these big chains have done it, how all these other companies have done it. And so you can understand what will help you as an independent get to that level and be able to compete with those chains because... There is a commoditization going on in our market right now where every all these chains are buying it all up and they're turning everything into these commodities that they can sell dirt cheap, right? And we just talked about it right here. And they're trying to commoditize everything. Now we know they can't as all these fancier and fancier cars coming out, but that's what they're trying to do. If you're not prepared, you're not going to be able to get your shop to that next level. So, and honestly guys, if you're in another group and you're, you don't want to give up your relationships, totally fine. Get it. Buy our material. We even have our driving growth course, which is a totally separate thing. We can tell you about that in another video another time, but that's a massive course that provides a lot of value that we throw in for free for all of our Mastermind members. And it's an amazing deal that um, right now AMI told us just recently that it was the most exhaustive course in auto repair they'd ever seen. 17 and a half hours of content, 99 videos, now with another 40 bonus videos on top of that because we never stop adding to it. So we're not playing. We're not messing around. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's our sales pitch, and that's exactly what it is. It's a sales pitch, and you should be doing the same thing with your customers in your shop. It's a sales pitch. I hate it when people go, well, they're just writing service. No, they're not. They're selling. So get passionate about it and get excited about it, because if you've got something you know can help your customer, you need to sell it. And if I've got something I know that can help my client, I need to sell it. So let's all pony up, step up in the plate. Let's understand what we got to do for our customers and have those hard conversations with our customers at our front counters. And if this is a fit for you, great. If not, totally understand. Keep watching our free stuff. Please share this with your friends. Please tag your friends. Tell them about it. We are trying to help the industry. We're trying to turn things around from a shop owner's perspective. All right, guys. I think I'm done. We're going to head on out. TJ? Um, He's trying to stop.